Reston, the people here will tell you, is a place apart. Newcomers sense that when they first arrive. Reston is just, well, different. That difference didn't just happen. Robert E. Simon, the man who literally dreamed Reston into existence, was more than a developer who thought big. When he bought Sunset Hills Farm more than two decades ago, he wanted to create something unique in America. When we were initially planning Reston, we were dealing with a sufficiently large land mass to be able to push the state of the art a little bit. Our emphasis was constantly how could we make life in the second half of the 20th century in the U.S. a little better, uh, a little more fun, a little more rewarding, a little more productive. To make a people place, that was the difference Simon was reaching for. A way for large numbers of people to live in a city and in the country at the same time, in harmony with the natural environment. One way to achieve that was an idea that was almost radical at the time, the cluster concept. The cluster concept basically says, let's develop a planning philosophy for what kind of a landscape we want. Let's be able to circulate through it on a common walkway so that people can walk through this land and enjoy it. It seems to me that you get a great deal more enjoyment out of living where you share in the pooled land resource. When you cluster homes, shops, and offices, you create a lot of open space, space the whole community can use and enjoy, whether as natural areas or as space for recreation. But to make sure each generation can enjoy and use it, that space must be managed, cared for. The rest in association to which you belong if you own or rent here, is the organization that preserves the lakes, defends the trees, and protects the open space. Well, we have almost a thousand acres of open space that we care for, and most of that, I'd say at least a good half of it, is treed. I've been here for almost 20 years. All my favorite wooded areas, I've gone back to them, it's like, wow, you know, look how big these trees are. You know? And so now I tell kids, it's like, come to the Nature Center, find a tree that you can really attach yourself to and know that it's not going to be taken down unless Mother Nature wants it to be. Because this is preserve land, this is land that has been set aside. It is the place where you can find that special tree and grow with it. Most people enjoy the out of doors and make good use of the recreational facilities. There's something for everyone. I am practically smack on the, on the walkway and uh, it will have people walking as late as midnight. It will have people walking, jogging, as early as five in the morning. It's a very secure thing. Where else can you walk a, what is it, about a mile and a quarter without crossing a street? When our grandchildren come, I turn them loose. They can't get run over. I guess you could look at Reston as a large gymnasium. I wasn't a serious athlete at first, and Reston almost pushed me into being so. You can start out as a weekend jogger and, and do a one or two miles on the trails, but the trails are so nice and it's so easy to get going and keep going that I've become a triathlete since I moved to Reston, not because of any inner desire. I wouldn't have done it if it hadn't been all right here for me. But the chance to become a serious athlete is only part of the story. The Reston Association makes recreation a family affair. When a family moves into Reston, they're sort of presented with a whole myriad of, of recreational possibilities. You know, just the pools and tennis courts alone are enough to give you a full summer. And then on top of that, the Racquet Club provided for us also a fitness center. As a family grows, they, they gradually begin to realize how many choices and how much diversity there is in ROA and the facilities that it offers. The association's recreational facilities are a magnet for the whole community. For many Reston youngsters, that takes the form of playing on a coached soccer, baseball, football, tennis, or swim team. I have never seen any place like Reston. My gosh, it's got all the fields as good or better than any fields I've ever seen. 
Uh, they have uh, the baseball fields, the soccer fields, you know, and everything. I don't know why I'm limited to just the kids because there's a heck of a lot of adults out there, or big kids, let's put it, that <laughs> out there playing games, you know, uh, volleyball and, uh, you know, football, soccer, baseball. Everywhere you turn on any corner, there's something to do with outdoor activities. When you first drive into Reston, any friend of mine that ever comes to visit me, the first thing they say is, my God, they left all the trees. But the difference goes beyond the way the town environment is maintained. And it's more than just a bag full of recreational opportunities. In many subtle but important ways, it's the whole thing, the quality of life. People, they feel good. They may not understand why, but they do feel good about the natural harmony that has been structured here. We were first blessed with a beautiful site, and then we've been blessed with beautiful people who have maintained that site and worked to maintain that harmony. When it comes to architecture and homes, the association's job is once more to defend and preserve, protect and maintain. The Design Review Board, the DRB, assures a balance between exercising individual rights and preserving that special something people came here to find. To make sure the special stays special, the Reston Association upholds property covenants and standards. I think that uh, the, the real essence of what, uh, what the DRB is trying to do is preserve a harmony so that buildings, signs, etc., don't contrast with their environment, but rather blend with their environment. Reston was set up with a proportion in mind. Um, and again, it got down to that blending with nature working with sites and there has to be a strong group in place to say no no we believe you're violating the basic proportions of the original plan the basic tenants the basic covenants but that no is coupled with something positive a much stronger yes the setting is very appealing the softening, it's not endless houses and townhouses and apartments. The trees and the ring of nature that surrounds many of the communities is, is important and creates a sense of difference. Twenty years later, Robert Simon's dream for a new town has become the hometown for 50,000 people. And in bringing that sense of difference to Reston residents today, the association acts as an exterior decorator, a recreational director, and as manager of an organization with $12 million in community assets. Many people think of the association as just the people who cut the grass. But that's only a small part of it. Certainly not all that Bob Simon had in mind. As usual, his vision was a lot larger. We never envisaged ROA as being limited to taking care of the physical property. We always thought of it as a vehicle for doing what people wanted to do. ROA has a sense of mission, and that is to maintain standards of excellence. The association does a thousand jobs a day, but they're really all the same job, creating the difference that makes rest in a community you enjoy living in. Reston not only fosters a sense of community, it is a community. It is a, a place where people feel that they can set down roots, uh, they can develop. I also have a sense that when Roa talks about um, the town, it is, in a sense, fostering the concept that we are one unit, even though we're not. But I think we tend to view ourselves as having some common denominators, like the preservation of the open space, uh, the preservation of the concept that this is a unique and very special place, that we have a stake in what happens to the place called Reston. Maybe in the end, the difference the association provides is hard to pin down in words, but not in real life terms. It's the rush of excitement you get when you watch your daughter score her first soccer goal. 
It's the contentment you feel walking in an unspoiled woods on a Sunday afternoon. It's that little flash of pride you get when a relative comes to visit and is charmed. When you get right down to it, the association has an unusual constituency, and they are part of the rest in difference too. Sure, it's the residents and the town itself in a funny kind of way, and even the idea of what a town ought to be like. But the association's real constituency is one that few of us ever think of. It's the people who don't live here yet. The ones who will come here just as you did and say, yes, this is the place.